Whew. Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I just raced in from outside. I barely made it. Literally sat down here at 5.59. <sighs> it's been a day, it's been a day. Hello, Alex, hello, James. Hello from the Golden Pavilion Rehab Facility in Daly City, California. I'm sorry, you're stuck in California? That's a shame. Uh, Auntie Anne, hello, hello. David Glunt, hello. We got a couple of our members in here. I love it. Uh, I've got Marty apparently filling in for Mike tonight. Um, I'll fill you guys in in a second. Uh, let's see. Old Man King Homestead, good evening. Mid South Homestead, evening. How's everyone doing today? I'm doing well. I can't speak for everybody. It's been a busy day. It's been a crazy week. And it's not over yet. And it's fixing to get busier because, yeah. <laughs> But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, let's see. Got Kenny Jr. running good, says David Glunt. I love it. Drew's lens. What's going on? Sid must be running in at the last minute again. I was. I surely was. It's. I'll fill y'all in in just a second. Whew. Man. Lonely Hitchhiker Kent. Howdy, howdy, y'all. Hello. What's going on? Evelyn Newman, another member. Hello. Todd's Adventures. Randy Jameson, where's Mike? I'll tell you in a minute. J. Rudy Morgan Clark, good afternoon. Hello, Alex from Canada. Billy Tyson, hello from, I'm going to mess it up, Escatapa, Mississippi. Escatapa, Escatapa, Mississippi. There we go. Maybe. <laughs> hello from Southern Illinois, Richard Keaton. Drew Lynn says, I've been putting a starter in a Dodge van. Took a few hours. Whew. Auntie Anne says, your hair is getting really long. Very pretty. Thank you. I've, I've been growing it out for a minute. And then every other time, like I, I used to get it cut like every six to eight weeks. And I've been going like every other time. So like 16 weeks, 12 to 16 weeks I've been getting it cut like and just trimmed. So it's starting to, I mean, it's I feel like it's almost back to like where it was. I think it is back to where it was before I whacked it short. Um, but I felt like it took a lot longer to grow out, but I did have a couple times where the hairdresser forgot we were only trimming it and I was growing it out and she like cut it back to where it was. And I was like, Oh, starting over. <laughs> it's just hair. <laughs> Dot Roper. Hello, Charlene Grady. I got it right. Says Billy Tyson. I pronounced it somewhat right. At least that's good. Paul Honeyman. Hello from England across the pond. Hello, everyone from Little River, South Carolina. Looks good. Thank you, Lonely. Poker game tonight. Nice. He does want to get a poker game going with some of his local friends around here. I am sure. In fact, I can, I can almost guarantee it. He's going to want to do at least one evening of a poker night of some of the guys that are interested in doing a poker night uh, when we do the meetup. Or not the meetup, but the uh, Freedom Weekend, rather. Um, so we'll see, we'll see, which I'm excited. And I told the, the family, um, we got, uh, you guys know, we've worked with high C a few times, um, with their muck boots. And I've got a pair of their cowboy boots that I actually wore to the concert, this concert the other night, the Zach Bryan concert. And, uh, which I'll tell you guys about that in a minute too. Um, it's been a busy couple of weeks, um, uh, between Frankie's birthday and now Mike's birthday is this week. And, whew, um, anyway, uh, they agreed to give us a pair that we can like raffle off to a person. And I know we'll be doing like a raffle at the meetup in May at Blue Mountain. So I thought, perfect, we'll just do that. So it'll be fun. It'll be, it won't physically have the boots there. So the person will be able to pick their size and everything. Um, and you know, if it's the woman boot or the man boot or whatever. Um, and they may even be able to choose between a couple different styles from what I gather too. So that's kind of cool. Um, so I just have to, I'll just let the gal know and then she'll, you know, get the address of the person and they'll just, they'll just ship it directly to them. So that's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, yes, Drew says, I love the high C stuff. They are a great company. They really are. And they really stand behind their stuff. They have a lifetime warranty on their boots which is not something you see very often anymore and i can tell you my first pair of high c's of my muck boots it sounds starting to sound like a commercial for them but i just love them they're not 
not paying me anything for right now to say anything about them, but, <laughs> um, they, I, I mean, I wear the bejesus out of them. I have done, a, I mean, I hike around them all around here and run back and forth and I kick them off using my other foot and I'm, which is, I know it was probably bad for them, but I'm always have my hands full. And, uh, those suckers just look like the day I got them. I mean, they weren't as muddy when I got them. Obviously they were clean when I got them, but they're still like, usually a pair of muck boots falls apart after, you know, the, you know, those $20 ones you buy at tractor supply and they hurt your feet and the water still gets in them. And anyway, these things, I just, I really like these things. So they're good stuff. My birthday was yesterday. I'm 29 again. Nice. David Glenn. Happy belated birthday. <laughs> nice. I love it. And you don't look a day past 30. So it's all good. <laughs> Glenn and Shannon Salty Life. Hello, hello. There we go. Uh, so Mike is, I just checked where he was on Life 360 because sometimes um, even when we're home, I don't know where he is or I don't know where Frankie is or whatever because one of us is off doing something on the back 40 or whatever. I almost, unless I'm filming, I'm real bad about this, guys. I don't take my phone with me when I go out to do stuff. Um, and Mike yells at me about it all the time because I just take off and go. And, you know, I, I'm surprised he's as good about taking his phone with him as he is because he's even a little bit older than me. Um, he's turning 51 on Friday guys. Um, and you know, we grew up in a generation when, where we didn't have a leash, an electronic leash when we walked out that door, you know, if you wanted to get a hold of me, you had to leave a message on my home phone. And if I felt like it, I will call you back between the hours of, you know, 9 and 8 p.m. Uh, and so I don't think about taking it. But anyway, they're real good. Mike and Frankie are real good about sticking it in their back pocket or whatever. I'm just never good about it. A lot of times I have on leggings when I'm out there uh, and they don't have pockets either. So I just never think to grab it unless I'm specifically going out to film something. That being said, I checked his location to see where he was and he is at the hog barns. I can see him on the map. Um, and he's got my truck. He actually took my truck this morning. He had to go get some stuff at neighbors, which is our, uh, like hardware supply. I don't know what he needed. I think. And then I met him. I had to, I called him. I leave my church key, um, in the console of the truck usually. And I had just put it back in there last night thinking I was going to be driving to church today because I had to unlock the church to get everything ready for the big pantry boxes today. And I realized as I was leaving the house and getting it in his car, I'm like, oh, shoot, he has my church key. And it was a good thing. I called him and I was like, are you still in town? Are you going to be in town for a little while? And he said, yeah. So I actually met him in the Walmart parking lot because that was his next stop in town. Met him in the Walmart parking lot, grabbed my key and bailed. And it was a good thing I did because nobody showed up until like five minutes before. And I still had hams to un unbox and get out of the fridge. And I had like 30 minutes of work to do before anybody even showed up. So that was, thank goodness, <laughs> thank goodness. Ridge Life, what's crack a lacking? What's crack a lacking? Um, anyway, uh, so uh, <laughs> he's, you know, he's uh, he's aged like a fine wine. I would say Mike's aging like a fine wine, but it is his birthday weekend. I see. I see somebody saying hi to Jen, but I didn't see her. But hi, Jen. I'm I, I'm assuming you're in there. Um, nice elevator man says, Hey guys, made alive. I love it. Greg is in the house. What's going on? Brian from Vineyard Farmhouse. He's got a big live tonight. It's his hundredth live tonight at nine o'clock. Um, and after he, he sent me that, I was like, how many lives have I done? So I looked it up and they're split up in two categories. So I couldn't see it all under one, but from roughly somewhere between like 170 and 200 because they're 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 not I can't I couldn't view them on my phone to see exactly um so I think it's close to 200 either way but anyway um I'm here just making dinner nice um so Mike just texted me too looks like he's pulling up which means the dogs are gonna bark settle down anyway so he's, hey 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 Hey, hey, it's just daddy. Hey, 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 get down. Hey, hey, Lundy. Hey, no bark. You're done. 
Thank you. Um, <laughs> that's, how you that's how you get to talk to the shepherds that way. Um, anyway, so I had texted Mike when I was coming back because I had stopped at the grocery store after the church thing. I stopped at the grocery store and pick up a few things um, for his birthday dinner and stuff. Does he not realize that I'm in the middle of life right now? He's calling me. He's special. You know I'm in the middle of a live right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You want to be on speakerphone? Okay. Oh, that's mute. There we go. You always wanted to mute me. Tell the truth. Huh, true story. So, listen, I'm getting the last load of compost right now. I'm yeah. actually pulling up in the yard to dump I, it. I saw you just now. Yeah, but here's the thing. I got to go back and get the tractor because I got to be able to unload the stuff that's out of the back of the truck and I'm going to need the tractor to do that uh, before you can have the truck. So uh, I probably won't be in there for the last. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So um, uh, say hi. Can the people hear me? They can hear you. Hello to the people. Plus, you don't want me to come in right now. I smell okay. really, really bad. That's too bad. I was going to see if you could cover the last couple minutes because I needed to dip out a little early. But it's that's... possible. It's yeah, possible. I doubt it. Long it takes me. I got to go get the tractor, right. use the tractor to get the stuff out of the back of the truck, and then I'm done. All right. Okay. All right. All right. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. <sighs> Never a dull moment with that man. Never a dull moment. So, um, yeah, so when I pulled up, he wasn't here when I was racing back. And I realized he didn't get my message about, hey, can you, you know, put the dogs up to eat and outside dogs and give Beulah her stuff. And so when I got home, Dan was in the yard. And um, so we had to move the camera because the camera wasn't covering enough of the goat pen. And so it was like cutting off where we think he's getting out, but we still couldn't see if he's going over or under. Um, I think he's going under. I really do. Um, but anyway, so he was just out in the yard and he comes right to me. It's not like I have to go catch him. He literally walks right over like, hey, mom. And he's already eaten everything that Mike planted in the garden. So there's nothing else for him to eat out there. So he's been literally just eating like the the grass and the weeds that are coming up over on the other side of the, the grass is greener on the other side of the pen. But Mike's going to put some, he's got some, he doesn't have any more hot wire that he can use. Cause I guess he gave some to Ryan. I don't know. Um, so I think he's going to put a little strand of barbed wire to help deter, which basically probably means I'm just going to get a cut up goat. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> <sighs> maybe Mike just needs one of those lists that Tim uses maybe but anyway I know he's got the back of the truck as he was saying is full because I know he went to neighbors and I guess he didn't unload in between when he got back why I'm not sure the only thing I can figure is because the tractor was still down at the hog barn and whatever he's got back there I have no idea what he needs the forks to get it out um but I think that he picked up um a blackstone today that was his birthday gift um, I actually didn't get him anything because originally the Blackstone he wanted, when we looked at how much it was, even with the military discounts, even with the best sale I could find, all the thing, it was like $1,200. And he was like, I can't spend $1,200 on a barbecue. And I was like, no, sir, you may not. Um, but we wanted to get a nice Blackstone for just in general, number one, we kicked around the idea for several years. We just had never gotten one because um, Mike, at the time, we didn't know anybody that had one. And we were like, we don't know if it's like a fad, kind of like the Traegers when they first came out. The first ones were kind of sketched, um, but they've gotten better. Um, and anyway, so we want to be able to have a, a Blackstone so that we could, you know, have it for Freedom Weekend since we're going to have, you know, so many people here. So, <sighs> He just wanted to tell Tim how hard he was working. That's true. Because no work life is always, you know, I always have a list going. And that's why, like yesterday, 
I'm so mad at myself. I'm usually really good. I mean, I keep track of everything. I schedule everything. I'm on top of everything. I have to know who needs to be where, when, when this is due, when that is due, when this is happening. Like it's constantly like I, Mike wonders, I told him, I was like, this is why I can't shut off my brain and sleep at night because it's just a constant running list of stuff in here. Right. And so, and I put it down on paper. I have an electronic one in my phone. I write it down next to my computer too. A lot of times when I'm having a particularly long struggle bus. Um, but anyway, I hadn't, we were supposed to have a meeting at church last night, but it was canceled because it's Holy week, but I didn't know that. So we still like, I hurried up and did a bunch of stuff and got us to the church. And then nobody was there. And I was like, it's not happening this week. So I felt really stupid after that, but you know, it happens. So yeah, my, well, no, we found one at Walmart that was like under $200. So I was like, I could, or not under 200. I'm sorry, under 300. It was like 230 something, I think. Um, it wasn't the exact one that he wanted, but it was still the, the big gr griddle or flat top rather. Um, and that was the important part to him. It didn't have a bunch of the other things that he wanted. But I was like, do we really need the built-in air fryers? Because we don't use the air fryer we have hardly. Like, I make our bonzo beans in it, and that's about it. And Frankie will make, like, um, a chicken nugget sometimes when she has friends over in it. And that's it. Like, I can't, every, it's, ours is really small, so it's really, like, it's for, like, a single person. So if I'm cooking dinner, I don't think to use the air fryer because you can't. It's too tiny. It's just too tiny. So. But, uh, but anyway, so he's been running around and I do see the Blackstone box in there. So he did get it. I can, he's backing up the truck right now. Um, here, I'm going to turn you guys around so you can see. Can you guys see? See if it'll focus. There he is. He's backing up the truck and dump trailer. We borrowed that dump trailer from, um, from our buddy Bart. And he's, we'll see how badly he backs this up. This could be entertaining. But, uh. Oh, he's going forward. I don't know what he's trying to do right now. Oh, there he goes. He's getting a straighter run. We'll just watch him back up. We'll see how many. I'm trying to hold my arm straight. It's not going well. Um, but uh, he's just he's backing that trailer up. We've been he's been using the heck out of it for the last couple of days. That's for sure. So, and I struggle busting. Maybe you guys can help me with this. I read the directions. I watched YouTube videos. There you go. He's got it. He's just going nice and slow. Anyway, we got a DeWalt pressure because, you know, Mike, everything has got to be DeWalt because he likes DeWalt because um, he's got all the batteries for stuff. Um, so we had gotten a pressure washer because ours died and I need like desperately need to do the siding. And I refuse to pay somebody to do it. Hey, knock it off. Hey, Lundy, you're good. It's just the truck. It's fine. Um, and anyway, so we got one, but it's one of those ones that the hose goes in the bucket and I've tried priming it. I've, I've, the guy said it takes a while to prime on one of the videos, but I mean, I primed it. I tried filling the hose, like nothing. And I can't get it to like suck up water to save my life. So I'm gonna have to troubleshoot it some more. But if any of you have any tips, because I'm frustrated with it and I want to be able to get that chore done. So you know, um, but it's that 20 volt, uh, battery one that you could hook up to a hose or also just use the bucket. And I have it used in a bucket because I'm on the side of the house where there's no, there's no hose. <laughs> there's no hose in this house. <laughs> anyway. Um, so Mike's been, he took a couple loads of stuff to the dump. He's been getting that compost out of the hog barn. Um, we, moved the chicken tractor, fixed and to process a bunch of birds, hopefully this weekend. I have a feeling Mike's going to, well, here's, here's the other problem. My chicken plucker is still currently in several pieces in his shop. And I have nagged him every week since the week I saw him completely take it apart. Um, the, mind you, the only thing that needed fix was the plug. So um, but now it's in several pieces and I don't know what happened, <laughs> but I do know that I do not want to hand pluck 50 birds if I don't have to. Um, so 
that means he's got like two days to get the plucker working. Uh, so yeah. And he was also supposed to order some shrink, more shrink bags, which I also don't think happened. I have some, but, and he's going to say, well, we can just do it the next week. The problem is I can't, I have this timed. I have turkeys coming. Um, and those geese that I'm brooding for Jen and my one gander. And I need, I need these guys out to pasture, which means I need those guys to not be out to pasture because we were supposed to have another tr chicken tractor by now and we don't. So my only other option is to move the meat birds in with my regular chickens, which I can do. Um, that will work for like a week if I have to. It's not ideal, but I could do it. Um, it's really not ideal because I don't, the pecking order situation will be a disaster. So I almost need to like make them like a little ring inside somehow, which I could do. I could make a makeshift pen in there. I could, I could do that. I could, I could make something like with, yeah, I can make that work if I have to. I'm going to have to MacGyver it a little bit. Josh Ward, what's going on? Too wet now to do anything? We're really lucky because we're up on a little bit of a hill. We have areas about out in the back pasture and like in some spots where there's like, you know, muddy, squishy marsh um, after real good rains. But for the most part, it all drains. Oh, yeah, I mean, it all drains away from the house for sure. And it drains away like my animal pens don't get nasty. Like, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's nice being up on a little bit of a hill. I will say that. Um, so I think apparently replacing the, the plug on the plucker led to other stuff. Yeah. But I, I just, oh man, I gotta, I gotta get that done. Gotta get that done. So yeah. And then it's been a stressful week too, because I had a whole thing I'll tell you, I might save this one for a sipping and spilling this week. I hadn't said anything about it yet on there because I was kind of waiting to see how it shook out. Um, but let's just say the government came after me in a weird way, in what I would consider a very unprofessional way. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm not a fan. So... I might actually, I, I might actually do a full sip on spilling on that because it's, there's a lot of details to it and yeah. Um, so, uh, anyway, mama V what's going on? I'm sorry. I was, I, I was telling them I'm, I ran in here at like five 59 and fired up the computer because I was literally spinning and, um, Mike is still outside playing with poop dirt. So meh, I was on my own. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you are going to need to explain more than that now, Sid. Okay, well, we'll just say this. I'll give you the, the teaser for it. I had made a post. Uh, we have like a local Facebook group for like our town. And I had made a post asking about some of the things that they would want to see at the farmer's market and stating that um, I also wanted to kind of um, see if there was any interest in meat chickens um, that I wouldn't be selling them at the farmer's market, but that I would have them available in the future. Um, but I wanted to see if there was any interest in them. Like that was all. I didn't say anything other than that. Okay. Um, I got a Facebook message from somebody, which now mind you guys, I get a lot of Facebook messages. Right. Both on my personal account from people that find me and on the channel's account. Right. And a lot of scammers. Like I get a lot of scammers on the channel's account this week in particular. I have gotten like over 50 scammers hitting the channel. Right. Um, messaging me saying, like, I have to click this link because they're going to shut down my page and all this stuff. Right. So I've just been like going through that and reporting it and blocking, reporting and blocking, right? All that stuff. So I get this message and I look at it and I'm like, 
she's saying she's she, this person saying they're from the you know USDA and wants to make sure I have my stuff in order and blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay, I'm like that doesn't sound legit. Um, and I'm like, I have all my stuff in order. I hadn't filed it yet, but I had it. I was getting it all together, right? Which I didn't need to have it filed yet because I hadn't done anything yet. Okay. Um, a couple days later, somebody from church says, so-and-so was trying to get a hold of you, um, about your post and da, 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 da. And at that point, this was a couple days later, I had filed everything and I'm like, okay, I don't like, okay, maybe she does at least this person like lives here or whatever. Um, but I still was kind of like, this is weird. Like, okay. And so then I reached out to the person and I said, you know, I filed my paperwork. Thank you for your concern or your interest or something along those lines. And she had deleted her previous message three days after she sent it, by the way. Um, and so I'm like, okay, that's weird. Um, and then she's like, okay, well, I'll be coming by. And I'm like, for what? Like, for what? We have an exemption. You only have to inspect if we're doing 20,000 birds. This is for 1,000 and under. And she's like, well, it's just a courtesy visit. Anyway, that's just the teaser. And it goes back and forth. And now there's like other things involved and whatever. Mike thinks that I, he agreed with me initially. And now he thinks that I'm in the wrong or I'm crazy. I don't know. He always thinks I'm crazy. My whole thing was she contradicted herself many times wouldn't give me her professional email, wouldn't give me her supervisor's name right away, changed her story a few times. Um, I just didn't care for it. Nothing against this woman. I'm sure she's perfectly nice in real life, but I did not enjoy the whole thing this week. And so it was just like, not happy for me. It was not happy for me. So, um, and then she told one of her supervisors a very different story. And that person message, you know, emailed me um, of like saying that I asked my husband to be called. And I'm like, that never happened. I didn't request for anyone to call my husband. My husband called on his own and did an inquiry. Like, let's not gaslight me. And then she's like, well, the, then the, oh, and that was the other thing. This was the other thing that like really toasted my biscuit was um, she said, well, she only, she had no other way to get a hold of you since we didn't have your paperwork other than through Facebook. And I'm like, in two clicks, she would have seen my three Mississippi email and she could have sent me a professional email. Like, don't gaslight me. Don't make me think I'm crazy. Don't tell me the sky is green. That's all. Like, and don't tell me the rules are now different. I don't know. Anyway, I'm, I'm, it, I'm really not super happy. I did speak to somebody yesterday. I'll give you guys the full skinny uh, on the next episode of Sippin' and Spillin'. But that was that was the lead up to it. So, and I'm not trying to get like, and I even said I was very polite with her because I still, when I initially was talking with her via messages, I wasn't sure if she was a scammer or not, or if she was legit 100% because then she changed her story. She was not with USDA. She was with, um, Mississippi Department of Agriculture and Commerce, which yes, they work under them, but that's very different. That's like saying, that's like if a sheriff from the sheriff's department says, oh, I, oh, I work with the FBI. You don't work with the FBI. You work under them in conjunction with them sometimes, but you don't work for them. That's different. It's misrepresentation. Like I wasn't cool with that. Anyway, so I've just been like, gaslit and lied to and told different stories and nothing. Yeah. And I know part of it is because like, maybe because we're newer here and she didn't personally know me. So she decided to like go after me. I don't know. And who knows, you know, I'm sure she's told some stories, but anyway, I worked for all the ABCs in DC, but never claimed to be them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Oh, I did. I screenshotted everything because after she deleted the first message, I went through and screenshotted our whole conversation. So I have receipts. I have receipts of everything she changed her story on from it's a courtesy visit to no, it's actually required to this, to that. So I'm like, what, just tell me the, just tell me the answer. Cite it for me in the poultry act, cite it to me in the regulations. Cause it's not there. Like that you have to do an inspection. It's not there. And Mike's like, well, you should just, you need to just calm down. It's no big deal. I don't know. I don't know. I don't like government overreach. But I also don't want to piss them off to the point where they say, like, you know, we're pulling your exemption and you can't, you know, we're shutting your farm down, essentially. I don't want that either. But I also don't want to be a doormat because somebody decides that they feel like they can tell me what the laws are when I can show you what the laws are. Like, I'm I'm not stupid and I can read. So anyway, I get fired up about it. It bugs me. It bugs me. I'm sorry. I don't mean to rant about it that long, but that's, so I will give you guys the full skinny on the whole series of events. Cause there's, that was like the reader's digest version on the next sip and spilling because it was a lot. So <laughs> I did. I know Josh, you can tell I'm mad, right? Oh, Mike probably will not be here tonight. He is moving compost. So even when he's off from working on vacation, he still doesn't make the live. Can you imagine if I too just decided, oh, I'm not going to make it in time and then nobody was here? Just throwing caution to the winds all the time. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Pookie and Ray Ray run in that department. <laughs> They've got Shamika and Shanene making their calls. Call Andy Gibson direct or Hayes Patrick there with Mississippi Department of Agriculture. Roger that. Drew says, looks like I own Ukraine oh, oh, $1,600 after getting his taxes done. Ain't that the truth? Oh, ain't that the truth? Well, thank you, Auntie Anne. She says, I have the right to rant. I know. I know. Anyway, it's just. Oh, so. Yeah. It's. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, I'm, you know, it's funny because like I've made nothing but friends in this town. And then this one random person from Facebook like attacked in like a weird way. And I'm like, what's your damage, Heather? <laughs> like, so how is the weather here? It's actually nice. We're, we're under a frost advisory tonight, which knock on wood should be our last one. I thought the one last week was or earlier this week or the end of last week, whenever it was, was going to be the last one. But I think. Tonight's the night. Um, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, it's it was chilly this morning, then it warmed up, but it was it was cool. I would say it was probably, I don't know, it was probably in the 60s, high 60s today, I would say, maybe low. Yeah, it was probably high 60s, maybe low 70s. I don't know. I don't really look. Just going by the air temperature, you know. I'm pretty sure Mike is an AI AI bot and doesn't really exist. Oh, no, because if that were true, I wouldn't have to clean up after him. <laughs> but yeah, this is birthday Friday. So we've got, you know, we have Monty service tomorrow night. And then we have a uh, good Friday service at noon on Friday. And so after that, we're going to barbecue with some friends over here. And um, so I had to, you know, I got to clean tomorrow and get everything ready and start prepping food and whatever. So got to do I know right thanks to my goat the frost advisory is a non-issue I know he said he's gonna fix it though because he has other things he needs to get planted but he's like I don't want to plant anything until we figure this out and I'm like well he had, I think he moved the camera already today um or he's going to I don't know but he needs to because it wasn't seeing the whole pen he needs to move it back a hair so that it can Cause he had it like right up against the fence. So it was only getting like this much of the pen. And he thinks he's getting out on that corner. But I think that's where he's going under the fence. Cause there's a gap there, which I pointed out when we built the fence and he was like, that's fine. And I'm like, but is it? So if that is where the goat's getting out, which I really hope it is because I really, 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 really want to say, I told you so like so badly. I really do. So I know that's petty. 
but I really, after the week I've had, I'm like, I really want to say I told you so. <laughs> I really want to be right on this one because I really feel like that. And even if he, and honestly, even if he is going over, when we got the fencing, I was like, that fencing's not really tall enough. And he's like, it'll be fine. And I'm like, but will it? Because it's kind of short. So I voiced concerns about both the top and the bottom of the fence. So the fact that his plants got eaten, while yes, I feel bad, and yes, it sucks for the farm, I also warned him. <laughs> Whether or not he remembers me saying those things multiple times during the course of building that pen, I don't know. But I can assure you that that happened. <laughs> Bless him. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Steve, Steve said that'd be funny if there was actually a live and the camera was running and nobody was there but everybody was like talking in the chat I know right hi Daryl says he lives in Minnesota Woo -woo. 28 in mid-south homestead this morning yeah it was it was pretty chilly this morning so I don't know if I tell my husband I told you so he makes my life difficult for a week or so after says Auntie Anne yeah, that's true. I still want to say it so bad though. I want to say it so bad. I just want to, I just want to be like, see, listen to me. Sometimes I'll be like, it's fine. It's fine. And I'm like, but it's not fine. It's not fine. Um, he did build me one cool thing this week. I had been complaining on the chicken tractor. Our old one that we built had like a step up because that was one of my complaints about one of our previous models that we had built that they would just kind of bum rush out and so he made like I, I lovingly refer to it as the naughty word for a rooster block if you know what I mean um so he made me the c block <laughs> and it basically is like a little piece of wood that goes on side like just inside of the door on little brackets and I just step over it and the birds can't bum rush me out into the pasture. And he did do that for me this week. So he gets like a point for that. He gets a point for that. That's right. Billy says, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. That's right. Um, but yeah, so we're going to be barbecuing Friday. In fact, I found, is Jen still in here listening? I don't know if Jen's still in here listening. Jen, if you're still in here. Um, I got, and it could be terrible. It could be absolutely just. We might as well sit in the corner and lick envelopes all night. But Natty Light has a strawberry lemonade version. It's like strawberry lemonade beer, but it's got flamingos all over it and all over the can. And it's pink. And I was like, I had to get it. So anyway, I got us that. Like I said, still bring your beer that you like. Still bring your Blue Moon. But um. We'll try these and we'll see if they're good or not. I don't even know if she's in here anymore, but there it is. I did actually get my man to make a C block. I did. Yeah, a rooster block, but that's not what I've been calling it, Dano. <laughs> I've been calling it something else. <laughs> I just won't say it in polite company. Not that any of us are polite, but you know. <laughs> <sighs> Oh, no. Cuddly Texan says it happened to a friend of mine. She actually was live while they were watching TV and he had to send texts and emails to got her attention. Oh, that's awful. Oh, I hope nothing bad happened. That's a terrible. I always worry about somebody like hacking in and like taking over my laptop and like seeing things. And yeah, I used to put like tape over it when I wasn't using it and I had it open just because it always made me nervous like if somebody could hack it I watch too many like crime shows probably and like always think somebody's hacking in my computer and I don't know that's right you all said it in your heads I know you did I know oh I'm telling you I'm telling you but yeah so if you don't have one I highly recommend a seed block for your <laughs> for your chicken tractor it keeps your birds from running out into the wilderness um but I am hoping we'll still be able to process some birds on Saturday. 
However, I feel like Mike's going to dip out from that because I feel like he's going to say, I don't have the plucker ready yet. I think I'm going to have to be scrambling to move some birds because the turkeys are shipping out. They're going to ship out sometime like between Monday and Thursday, right? Um, so, yeah. I mean, I could have a couple day overlap where I have two brooders in there. It's not ideal <laughs> at all. But, um, I mean, it could happen. When Lindsay edits the video, she points the camera down. Yeah, see, like, it makes me nervous. Like, I don't do it anymore, but, like, I did for, like, a long time. Um, oh, that was my goat for a minute. Somebody in the neighborhood watched them just send a picture saying, it's down at the stop sign, and I could see it was an animal, but I couldn't see the picture, but it was somebody's dog. It's not, I don't know who, I don't recognize the dog, so I have no idea. Um, but I was like, I know he wouldn't go that far because he stays right by the pen at least. So what did Larry say? said, if I could get a few pink flamingo eggs, would you be interested? Stop it. Don't play with my emotions like that, Larry. I know that they're really expensive. I'd be terrified to incubate them because they don't have big clutches, like they have very small clutches. And so um, I'd be terrified to incubate them. Like it's one thing if I throw chicken eggs in there and something doesn't go right, but oh my gosh, I'd be terrified to. I did look into ordering flamingos like years ago um, and it was gonna be like $2,400. <laughs> But I, but yeah, but of course I'd be interested. That would be an amazing, amazing experience. I can't even imagine how bonded those birds would be to me. Like when you hatch birds out in an incubator, they bond with you differently than when you get chicks at the store. A lot of times, if, I don't know why it's just like, they're not hatched by another bird and they only see you and know you. And like, I don't know, there's just like a different they're just different, I guess. But yeah, our mountain home, howdy, Sid. But yeah, that would be that would be a yes. I would be scared though that I would like mess up the incubation thing because uh, I don't know. Like you know, every like you know, pea fowl and geese have to be at a different humidity than chickens and quail and different times, and you get a stop. You know, I would just be messing up. You know. You don't live far from Bush Garden. I don't think you should try to steal flamingo eggs, though, Larry. And honestly, the shipping with those would be insane because you'd have to pack them so carefully so you don't rupture the air sac and, like, oh, it'd be a whole thing. They won't be pink. That's true. They're gray when they're born. Um, and they And some species of flamingo are, like, different slightly different colors depending on where they live and whatever but yeah that is true that is true Dana Mason hello I'm doing well we're doing good how are you doing I'm doing good I just heard Mike pop in the door he popped on in Larry Parrish is offering to steal flamingo eggs for me <laughs> No flamingo eggs. Flamingo eggs. Drew said I could have them. He never said that. He did. I said over here. Oh, well, Drew, no, Drew said. Drew said I could have. Yeah, Drew said it was fine. <laughs> He's going to want to have a talk with you, Drew. <laughs> Drew gave permission since you weren't here. He said it was fine. <laughs> He's about to come in here stinking like manure, y'all. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> what? I don't even know what that means, Paul, and I'm scared to know. I can't smell him yet. He's way in the kitchen right now, so I can't smell him yet, but I'm sure when, if and when he comes to sit right here, I will 
I will be able to tell. I bet he smells like, okay, I want to take a survey real quick. There's times where Mike and Frankie go outside and they come inside, even if they're only outside for like a minute. And I go, oh, you smell like outside. Now, there's like a smell that some people get and not everybody gets this. It's not BO. Some people have described it as like an ozone smell, like a, like a, like a staticky smell. I've seen people describe it as, I don't know, but it's like a weird smell. It's like a weird funk and it's not BO. It's not quite like wet dog. It's not, it's not that it's sharper than that. And I, and I looked it up and there's people online that say, yes, there's people that go outside that smell like outside. And it's not like when you go outside and you smell like fresh air or you smell fresh air. It's like a funk that they get from outside. And Mike and Frankie always get it. I've never smelled it on me. I've smelled it on other people, but not everybody has it. You I, talk about the things we do smell on you? <laughs> no, I'm just saying like, it's not like, but it's not like everybody can smell it either. Like Frankie can't smell it. Mike can't smell it. They think I'm crazy. Um, but yeah, see, people are saying, yeah, I know what you mean. So I don't know. It is a thing. Oh. It's a thing. What is that? It's yellow tea. It's yellow tea? I didn't yeah. know we had yellow tea. Oh. oh. Yeah, we do. Oh. oh, yeah. You don't even want to know what I've been through. I don't even know if we want you on the couch right now. Five and a half loads of hog compost. I found flamingo mm. beer today in the box phone. I saw it yeah. when I went and got my yellow tea just now. Yeah. Oh, so uh, I got a text earlier from Josh said you were making fun of my backing. Oh, yeah. I let everybody watch you. Back. <laughs> I backed that trailer pretty good. Yeah, you did fine, but you started out a little rocky. Well, that what you didn't know was there. There's a hill right there. Oh yeah. So where yeah. I tried to back it off, I, I was backing it perfectly fine, straight back down the driveway. Yeah, the rest of the way. Then I had to turn it and get it off the driveway. And then to you park went it. straight, and then you went. Then I realized it was sitting on a hill, and I wasn't going to be able to let the jack down. Hmm. It wasn't my backing. My backing was on point. Okay, it looked good. It got done. Hey guys. Raise your hand. It got done. I'm not if you want me to ask like Sid watching. to not try to turn the trailer, just back it down the driveway from the road to the house. I mean, it would take me a minute. I've never done that before. So. Who, who wants to see? Who wants me to film Sid back in that trailer from the driveway to the house? Um, they don't care. <laughs> oh. oh, Larry says no, not steal them. He knows the head of their Avery Aviary program. Ooh. Well, that's a different story. All that land and you back in, you're graveling it anyways. Actually, I'm not graveling the area. Um, I mean, in the front yard. I would be curious to know what they say. About what? <laughs> I'm talking to Larry. Short trailers are harder to back up than a long trailer. Yeah, I thought that one was going to be really hard to back. It's kind of medium size. Well, but it's 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 a double axle and it backs like a long trailer. It's mm. pretty easy to back, actually. So I don't know what she was making fun of. I wasn't making fun of. <laughs> I, was I was just I'm like, backing oh. it pretty well. well it backs you, easier than a bass. You started boat. out real slow, like you were struggling, and then I see you pull forward. So I was like, oh, this is gonna be good, guys. <laughs> like, uh-huh. <laughs> um yeah, a short trailer is usually harder to back. I used to haul a eight foot single axle five five and a half foot wide trailer for the band back in the day when i was a musician oh God, I forgot about that thing. and that thing was the worst it that was, thing would jackknife in a half a second at five miles like, an hour it was like a little it cube. was so hard to back yeah up. it was well it was yeah. hard to do anything with it was just and if it was empty he would uh, he oh if it was empty it would bounce off the road yeah, behind you like you was, had to you had to put something in it in yeah. order to haul it anywhere yeah Wow, look, I look ragged right now. I need a haircut so bad, guys. Ooh, I need more than a haircut. I need a bunch of hairs cut. If you get up early in the morning, I'll cut it for you. I'm on vacation, yeah. and it's my birthday. I don't get up early. Well, I, then I can't cut did it you. Did you tell them what I got myself for my birthday today? I did. It's not in the back of the truck anymore. Cool. I also had concrete in the back of the truck. Yes. But all checkpoints met. I was trying to get everything done by 6, but... I got everything done. Yeah. Yeah. The truck is now empty. Well, it's 
It's not empty. The back's empty. Do I still have gas? The back seat is full. Why is the back seat full? Because <laughs> I went to town. What did you buy? You went to town. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened. Okay. I went to the hardware store. Oh, boy. Good thing I gave you those coupons. Yeah. Um. What was I going to tell you all? I forgot now. I oh, yeah. I've known people that drive an 18-wheeler but can't back a small trailer. That's, you know, it's rare, but, uh, you know, some of those larger trailers are a lot easier to back. Um, I got Kenny going just... <laughs> I can't get the pressure washer to work, so I can't pressure wash them down yet. Oh, did you try to prime it? <laughs> I did, and I, the, I even watched a video of it said you have to prime it for a really long time, and it, I did, and That's it annoying. still wouldn't do it. That's annoying. So um, I need uh, to troubleshoot it further. I'm second guessing. And I read it from purchase. cover to cover. So Let's see. Did I get the stuff to fix the plucker? I did. Yep. Oh, yeah. We were just talking about that. That was yep. the other thing. Because I said, we're supposed to do birds on Saturday, but I the plan plucker on, is still in pieces. I plan on having the plucker running in the next day or two. We'll be. I have everything I need. Well, I have to leave because I have to go get the kids because yeah. they're not at their normal use thing tonight. So. Okay. Hey, do me a favor. Yes. Drop Frankie off at the hog barn so she can bring the Polaris home. Okay. I took the Ranger down there, or the Polaris. Down. What is it? A Ranger or Polaris? It's a Ranger Polaris. Yeah. Uh, Polaris I, Ranger. I took it to get the tractor because I needed the tractor in order to unload the stuff out of the back of the truck. Listen, I don't need to know your last story. I just need to know. Drop so her just drop, drop her off. She knows where it's at, where we were getting the compost from. And uh, did I get the bags for the chickens? Um, <clears throat> I ordered some. I don't know if they'll be here. For me. Huh? She's talking to me from another room. I have not looked to see if we have any bags. I just ordered more. So I probably should look to see if we have any because I don't know if they're going to be here by Saturday. Let's see here. Hey, Vineyard Farmhouse. What's going on, Brian? Uh, did everybody smash that like button? Well, let's see. There's 116 people in here. 95 likes. Uh, when Sid leaves, the number of people in the room go down. Nobody wants to see my round face. That's all right. I could talk some smack. Uh, how many Mylar bags did I, I ordered? Uh, 100. And, and they're not Mylar, actually. They're not Mylar. They're, uh, it, my, yeah, they're shrink, they're, they're shrink bags, shrink wrap bags. Um, no, nah, Jen, she's Sid's like walking out the door right now, and uh, I think she needs to grab something in town anyway, so she's running to get Frankie, but thanks for the offer. Todd's Adventures. Hey, thanks. Happy birthday. It's actually, what is today? The 20, today's the 27th, so my birthday's in a couple days. It's actually not today, but I treated myself today when I went into town. Uh, true story, guys. In fact, you know what? I'm going to shoot short about this, but I'll tell you all right now. I went to get six bags of concrete and it cost me $500. Now, how is that, you say? How does six bags of concrete cost $500? Well, I went to get six bags of concrete and that trip cost me $500 because, uh, you know, I wanted to buy some other stuff. And, and I've been wanting a Blackstone for. I've been wanting a Blackstone really honestly since since before we moved. Um and uh and and David's Blackstone up on Come On Mountain. Um hey, <laughs> Drew's Lens, we're all waiting on you. Thanks, brother. Love you, Drew. Um I, I you know, David's Blackstone, when it, man, when I saw how much food that thing put out with a bunch of people there, I was really excited. And then I started paying attention. All my buddies down here use Blackstones. They don't use charcoal grills now i'll never get rid of my charcoal grill because there's going to be things that i want to grill on a charcoal grill. i want a barbecue right which is different than grilling but i've been wanting a blackstone so today when i went to town you know i've been eyeballing this 36 inch that they have at walmart and it's the one i want with the exception of the one that i really want has the air fryer underneath and like a little warming like oven 
and I can't find it anywhere locally. I could order it, but it would take too long to get because I kind of want to use it this weekend. Uh, we got some people coming over for like, you know, my birthday weekend. Um, so I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to use that air fryer. Under any- we, we have an air fryer. So I went ahead today and pulled the trigger and got the one that I've been watching at Walmart. 36 inch. Mm-hmm. That thing's going to be nice. So Frankie doesn't know it yet. Yes, Jen, y'all are coming. You better be. And, uh, oh, we're going to be doing up some nice steaks. Some nice steaks. Um, fried rice. You know, I mean, it's essentially, yeah. You, I mean, yeah. I mean, if, you, if you've been to one of those, they flip, you know, what do they call that? Like the, the Japanese, like, whatever. What is that even called? I don't know. Anyway, where they where they cook on the grill in front of you. It's essentially the same grill, except the Blackstone is uh it's cast iron instead of stainless. But yeah, you can do all the same stuff. You make some yeah, hibachi. That's what I'm talking about. Um flat top for the win. A flat top grill, or uh I should get a flat top. Because I don't think I I don't have enough hair to get a flat top, but um, I was thinking about getting like a zero to three this time because these, these wings over here, I'm, I'm not all about these wings. They bug me. So I'm thinking a zero to three, just so it takes a while for these sides to grow again. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about the, uh, Hey, thank you, Larry. Um, yeah, I am needing a haircut. Jen. I've been needing a haircut for like weeks and, um, yeah, Sid's busy when I'm not. We're both always busy, so I don't know when she's going to cut my hair. Three minutes, Auntie Anne says. So many jokes I could make right now, Auntie Anne. And uh, I'm going to refrain. Uh, I'm going to hold off on the three-minute jokes. Uh, but y'all feel free. Go ahead. So, haven't used a, a hibachi since you were 19. Yeah, I've actually never cooked on one. But... I am very excited that, you know, the guys that are coming over, Will and Ryan, both have Blackstones. So while this weekend will be my first weekend cooking on the Blackstone, I will have adult supervision. <laughs> I'll have some guys that know what they're doing with these things, uh, making sure I don't ruin some nice ribeye steaks. Uh, let's see here. And this one time. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. This one time at Three Mississippi Camp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> one minute to put the kettle on. All right. Hey, Paul. Paul. Paul Honeyman. We love you, man. We love you. Um, happy birthday. Hey, Brooke. Uh, you know, the just where I'm in life, the people, the, the family, the the extended family um, that, that we've, that are new to us um, in the last couple of years. Just everything's feeling good right now. Um, Yes, Todd's Adventures. I, I actually bought the uh, I bought the the seasoning st- grease today. I bought two of them and a couple of tools just uh, so I've got them. But Frankie doesn't know it yet, but her and I are probably going to be unboxing that thing and starting to put it together tonight when she gets home. Of course, first she has to go pick my. <laughs> I was playing musical vehicles, so I came back. Frankie and I started getting this compost yesterday. So both of us went down there. I took the truck hauling the dump trailer, hydraulic dump trailer, and she drove the tractor down there. And um, and then we left the tractor there last night so that I could get some more loads today while she was at school. Well, I got four and a half loads today. And then and then I took the, the side by side down there and left it there. So that I could bring the tractor back because I couldn't unload the conk. I, I couldn't. I, I didn't want to unload the concrete out of the truck by hand. So now the side by side's down there. Um, but um, anyway, she's going to drop her off there. Um, the flat top will be uh, will get done before the picker. Time's up. Auntie Ann is telling me I got to go uh, because Simple Life Reclaimed is coming up right now. You guys don't forget. Uh, when you bounce into Simple Life Reclaim, uh, give them a love raid. Uh, say say hello from Three Mississippi, and uh, we love you guys. And don't forget to uh, 
Simple, yep, yeah, simple life reclaimed right now. That's that's what I'm telling them, Antian. Simple life reclaimed right now. Um, so bounce into simple life reclaimed, and uh, yeah, don't forget, guys, we love you, and safety's off.